As you've seen before, we've been manufacturing, making new bearings and bushes for the gearbox. This is a good example of where they fit. Um, I'll just take this example and show if it's into that part of the assembly there, like this. This is one of the planetary gears out of the gear trains and it actually fits over the top of this assembly. As, we've, uh, as you can see, we just, that one slots inside the other. This is one of the planetary gear trains. These are the brake drums, which actually apply the brake. When you put a, uh, a brake onto that, there's a band brake that actually engages the gear. Just, just again, demonstrating that. And as an example of how close the tolerances are on this, this gearbox, you can see the running gap, which is why the, the brass bushes, bronze bushes, have to be so accurately made and fitted. That is the running gap between the gear trains. So which is about half a millimetre. That way around. Yeah. That ring. Containing oil in there, right? It goes that way around. And there's a number for the egg, sorry. <sighs> As you can see, this is the basic gearbox casing. All the studs are where the, on the back here, there's an operating mechanism that eventually operates the brake bands, which operates the gears. These, stud, these covers on the top, there is one which does the operating spring in the center, which allows for an adjustment. And then these really are just observation points. So you can check your brake bands are operating correctly. Uh, if you need to, you can adjust them manually as well so the thing's operating properly. The studs on the outside, I say, basically just bolt everything on. This type of gearbox is what's known as an epicyclic gearbox, where the gear trains are actually contained in these steel drums and the internal mechanism there. Epicyclic means basically you've got a sun and planet wheels and then an annulus round. To engage the gear, you actually grip the annulus with a brake band, which we can demonstrate. We're now simulating engaging a gear in the gearbox using this piece of equipment, as you see, costs a lot of money. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to engage this. So I have a glamorous assistant who's going to crank the gearbox for me and you should see the output shafts rotate at a slow speed. This is the input bevel gear which converts the drive, the power from the engines through a right angle in the crane wheel there and then that obviously puts the drive via the gearbox to the final drives and the, out and the sprockets on the rear of the tank. If I now change gear, or effectively change gear, we go into a, this is fifth. And the shaft rotates at a higher speed. And one more demonstration, we'll select reverse. Okay, thank you, Tom. And that basically is telling us using this improvisation that all the gears are engaging. When the correct operating systems all put that together, it should all work fine. The assembly you see here is the brake band assembly, which is used to engage the gears, as I previously mentioned. The linings here actually run in oil. Originally, these were an asbestos material which have been replaced. That's one of the reasons for doing it. But also, part of the problem with the, with the vehicle was that some of these brake bands have been burnt out through um, incorrect adjustment. They're actually pulled on via a mechanism which is not, you can't see, it's fitted through the back of the gearbox. Uh, the bands contract, grip the outside of the drums or the annuluses, and that engages the gear. The gearbox is now assembled, ready for its test runs. We've installed the brake bands which operate the uh, gears, which you previously saw on another film. All assembled into the casing now. This mechanism you see here is actually the automatic brake band adjustment, which takes up brake band wear, operated by these little strikers that hit these cams, which we'll demonstrate shortly. This bronze lever is actually the gear selector lever. So you turn that, it's connected to the driver's cab, to a gear stick and driver's cab, it selects the gear. This is the change pedal operation. No clutch in a pre-selected gearbox. When the change pedal is pressed by the driver, an air servo, which is interposed between this and the, the change pedal, 
puts a lot of effort in to change it. As we again, as we previously referred to, is the there's a thousand pound spring underneath this, this this cap in here that operates. That's the thing that puts the pressure on to hold the gears in via the brake bands. It takes a lot of effort to change, which we'll shortly demonstrate. So we'll go. We're in neutral at the moment. We go and select first gear, and then we'll operate the change pedal. That has now engaged the gear, which I actually incorrectly called first. That's actually extreme low, which you use in very muddy conditions. So it's now engaged. The brake band is actually locked around the, the drum assembly and engaged that particular gear. Running from left to right, you have that's reverse gear, extreme low, first. From that end, it then goes second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then we'll go back into neutral. And there you go, they're all now out of operation, so the gearbox is in neutral.